everyone, thank you for tuning into my channel. My name is Lauren from Pink Bird Originals and today's video is going to have a holiday theme or a gifting theme and we are going to be embroidering on really big fluffy dressing gowns. So this is the one I made, this is the one I'm going to be embroidering in the video and showing you how I do that. I do have a confession to make, I actually filmed this video over a year ago uh, yeah, Christmas is a very hectic time for my business, so if you see some things in the video that aren't consistent with the layout of how I run my business now, that's because the footage for this video was most, mostly filmed in 2001. For my project today, I will be using the 12 needle HCS2 by Happy Japan to embroider on the garment but the techniques I'm using today can be used on any embroidery machine. It doesn't have to be a multi-needle, you can use these techniques on a single needle machine as well. This is my dressing gown. Here is the little design that I embroidered last year. The biggest issue with embroidering on dressing gowns is how thick the fabric is. And often when you're embroidering on very deep fabric like this, parts of it will poke up through the design. Now you can see I've managed to make it so that doesn't happen on my embroidery. And that's really what this video is all about, showing you how to stop the fabric from poking up through your design. I had this dressing gown as a gift of my mother-in-law for Christmas 2020. And honestly, I've worn it to death. This is the best thing. I just love it so much. It's so plush and warm and cosy and that's why I think dressing gowns make great gifts for people because they just, they're just great. Who doesn't love a dressing gown on a cold winter's day? Uh, the only really issue I encountered is with this dressing gown it has a hood and whatever this is called and when I put it on if I was to put the logo where I normally would have put it, which would have been a bit closer to the centre of the chest, then this would fold over and it would cover the logo like that. So what I did was I moved the logo slightly closer to the arm. Uh, I think the best way of doing it is just to put the dressing gown on and then have a look how it looks in the mirror and then just kind of figure out visually where you'd like your logo to be and then once you're kind of satisfied that it'll be positioned correctly i just get a little bit of washi tape or any sort of easy peel tape and i would just stick it then where i'd want the center of my logo to be on the garment and then after you've hooped up you can remove that tape it's just for positioning your garment within the embroidery hoop, as I'll say a little bit more on later. For this logo, there were two things I did to stop the fabric peeking up through the logo. Uh, first of all, I used one layer of very thick water-soluble stabilizer. And the next thing I did was in my digitizing software. Now don't panic if you haven't got digitizing software. Uh, in my digitizing software, I digitized a knockdown stitch. You can just see it there. A very loose um, fill stitch. I changed the density on it so that the stitches don't run as close together as they would on a normal fill stitch, which looks like that. So I'll show you more on the digitizing process of that uh, now. But if you don't have digitizing software, then just double up on your water-soluble stabilizer rather than using one layer of water-soluble stabilizer or topper, as it should be called. I keep calling it stabilizer, but it's topper. Um, then use two layers of water-soluble topper instead. And that should stop the fabric from peeking through your design and spoiling it. Now, I know at this point you're probably thinking if it only takes two layers of a heavyweight water-soluble topper, to press down the material and stop it peeking through the design, then what's the point in going through the hassle of digitizing? And I understand that, but uh, for two reasons. Uh, the first being I'm always trying to cut down on waste. 
sort by using one layer of water soluble topper instead of two uh, that benefits that reason but the second being which is probably more applicable is adding a knockdown stitch is almost like taking out insurance on your project i mean the water soluble topper would work just fine but with the added effect of the knockdown stitch then you're almost guaranteed perfect results every time so really annoyed at the screen recorder which I used to use, which I paid for, I might add. Um, ice cream uh, like suddenly become a subscription service and I'm not subscribing. So I'm sorry that this image is a little darker than what a normal screen looks like, but it still serves its purpose. To create the knockdown stitch, the digitizing software I use is a program called Embird. The penguin design is something I purchased offline. I think it was from a website called Urban Threads. And what I'm doing here is I am creating a normal object, a normal fill object, and I'm just tracing around the outline of my penguin. I'm going a little bit wider than the design itself because the fabric is so plush. Uh, I think that if I didn't give that bit of extra width to the outline, then the fabric would kind of cover the logo and I didn't want that. I wanted my logo to be clearly visible. Once the uh, fill stitch was complete, I increased the pull compensation to account for any shift in the material. And then to get that fairly loose knockdown stitch, I changed the density from 0.4, sorry, 4.0 to 12.0. The higher the number, the less dense your fill stitch will be. And because it is a knockdown stitch, I also, um, in the parameters palette, I removed my underlay stitches completely. So now there is just the knockdown stitch. The last thing I did was change the stitch angle so that it's running at a different angle to the rest of my fill stitches and satin stitches. By doing this, it helps lift the embroidery out of the fabric. You don't have to pick 35 degrees, you can choose whatever angle you like. I just always try to pick an angle that's kind of the opposite of all the other stitches in the design. I was to pick an angle that ran in the same direction as the stitches in the logo, then you find that those logo top stitches might sink in. And that is how I make my knockdown stitches. If I zoom in here, you can see that there is a distance between the uh, rows of stitches and that's what we wanted. For this project, as it is a thicker material, the dressing gown is very fluffy, I'm going to be using my magnetic hoops as it'll be easier to hoop up the material. I will also be using one layer of a medium weight water soluble stabilizer, which I purchased from Madeira. And for backing stabilizer, I will be using two layers of a medium weight tear away. When hooping up the garment, I do not float it. As I know a few people like to do that, I always prefer to put my uh, whatever I'm embroidering on within the hoop. I sit my two layers of tear away stabilizer on the bottom half of the hoop. And then as I've already marked up, my uh, dressing gown. I just try to place that mark within the center of the hoop. You find with magnetic hoops, it's much easier to line things up because it doesn't put so much of a strain on your wrist trying to clamp thicker materials in place. I just get the mark approximately where I want it to be and then I snap the top of the hoop in place. If I don't get it right first time, it isn't a big deal because the two halves of the hoop just pull apart easily and I can try again. It's rare that I get it right first time and I'd say this time was pretty spot on, but unfortunately I forgot that because we're embroidering on that really deep thick fabric I wanted to place my water soluble stabilizer on top of the material. I suppose I could have just uh, pinned the water soluble topper in place but it was easy enough to just pull the hoop apart and try again. 
And then once I was satisfied that uh, the hoop was center and I was going to be embroidering in the right place, I just peeled off that uh, little bit of tape that I used to mark out the center of where I wanted to place my design. And then I put the hoop back on top and clamped it in place again. And the garment is ready to embroider or oh, so I thought. I decided to re-hoop the garment so that the bulk of the material was hanging away from the embroidery machine and only the shortest length was facing into the embroidery machine. That way I hope to avoid any tangles when the design was stitching out and once the dressing gown was uh, hooped into the embroidery machine and I loaded up my penguin design, I changed the direction of it so that it would be embroidered correctly on the dressing gown. I can't speak for all dressing gowns, but because of the way I hooped my garment, I needed my penguin to be turned on its side. And then I run a trace uh, before I stitch out the design to ensure it doesn't hit the edges of my embroidery hoop. Uh, magnetic frames are usually non-standard hoops for most embroidery machines. Uh, I have done a video on how you can actually um, program the hoops into the machine, uh, but if you haven't done that, then it's always better to run a trace around the edges of your design to ensure that the needles aren't going to collide with the edge of the hoop. Uh, once you have programmed your embroidery machine to recognize the dimensions of the magnetic hoop, then it the machine will know whether your uh, design is going to exceed the boundaries of the hoop. Uh, I hadn't done that yet uh, when I was filming this video, uh, but I have now. So the design was complete, I removed it from the embroidery machine and I can just peel the magnetic hoop apart, as you can see it's left no hoop marks. And then rather than get the dressing gown wet, I just uh, peeled the water soluble topper away from the design, almost like a tear away stabilizer. I'm sure I did film tidying up the back of the design as well, but I seem to have misplaced the footage. But just like the water soluble topper, I tore away the back in and then just tidied it up with the scissors and the garment was complete. And that is the project completed. I hope you found this video helpful. I hope it gave you some inspiration of simple uh, personalization ideas that you can now go on to use on dressing gowns and other products like them that you can give as budget-friendly gifts that still look really professional and thoughtful. As always, if you have any questions or if you have any ideas of other projects you'd like to see me make in the future, then leave a comment down in the comment section below. I'll do my best to answer or I'll do my best to include your question in a future video. Again, thank you for watching and I hope to see you guys next time. Please like and subscribe to help my channel grow. Bye!